For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. Using social media to innovate in compliance. Many chief compliance officers and compliance practitioners often ask me how they could begin to get their arms around how to structure a program, such a program for their company. In an article in the MIT Sloan Management Review entitled Finding the Right Role for Social Media and Innovation, two authors considered that companies are really not deriving significant social benefit from their customer-facing social media efforts. Well, I thought about that in the context of the chief compliance officer focusing on the customers of a chief compliance officer as employees. So I'm going to use that as the basis for today's podcast. You have to acknowledge that social media focuses on the social aspects of communication. And I think that this leads to the key insight that social media is a two-way communication tool. It's both inbound and outbound. And it can help bring your employee base together in an efficient manner to create an environment conductive to compliance for your organization. It also has the benefit of continued engagement. It is more than putting on training or even a compliance week set of initiatives as you can continue the conversation and enthusiasm about compliance going forward literally throughout the year. So what are the three parts you need to emphasize around this issue? Well, number one, the need to listen and to learn from user-generated content. Number two, the need to engage and facilitate dialogue with employee innovators. And number three, to find an audience of early adopters to create excitement and collect feedback. These three concepts are named Camp Explore, Camp Create, and Camp Communicate. Under the Camp Explore model, this is the method of how to generate employee insights into your compliance program where activities are designed to extend the breadth and depth of your organization's search for innovations, particularly in the compliance area. The key is that the compliance function must be listening and listening in a manner which they have not used previously. You need to learn to read the signals from a large, diverse, and disconnected an unstructured pool of data generated by your employee users. In addition, you will need to learn to analyze and convert blog posts, tweets, and other user-generated content into insights for new compliance initiatives. Compliance practitioners need to use the skill sets of both a social scientist and a data scientist. This is because compliance practitioners need to assimilate, combine, and utilize the data, utilize data from many different sources across the globe. The overall award or reward, rather, from this Camp Explorer is to sharpen the business acumen of the compliance function and teach how to communicate the findings to those involved in the compliance projects. So the next is Camp Co-Create. If a company is matured past Camp Explore, the next step is Camp Co-Create. For companies who want to actively engage and involve employees in the innovation process around compliance, the overall goal is to be more collaborative to allow employees to be more involved in the design of your compliance program and compliance process. As a chief compliance officer or a compliance professional, you must learn to engage, identify, and select the right participants and develop the right incentives to encourage their participation. Creativity is both an input and an output of the co-creation process. Managers must also develop skills in relationship building and gain experience in the art of conversation and dialogue, a key aspect of collaboration for the compliance practitioner. Compliance practitioners will learn how to become better facilitators and managers. One of the important factors to visit is the unconventional users to help 
facilitate the creative process and compliance. Here, social media can be a powerful tool facilitating a two-way communication street to allow the compliance function to hear and even see <clears throat> what businesses and other types in the field may be seeing and hearing. In other words, the people you've asked to operationalize your compliance program. The model of involving employees for in-house innovation has always been useful to help build buy-in and acceptance, but more diverse the more diverse participation you have in the creative process also can pr provide you a much richer development. And finally, number three, entitled Camp Communicate. The learning, this learning camp focuses on the most obvious use of social media to communicate and tell a story. As social media becomes an ever more integral part of people's work and social lives, people have come to expect communications about compliance and the compliance brand around social media. Social media can also afford the compliance function the opportunity to interact more directly with its customer base, i.e. its employees, in a manner which is far more engaging than the old command and control system. If your goal in the compliance function is to create awareness and publicize your compliance program and initiatives, social media can be a powerful tool for you. In fact, uh, I believe it should be a core activity of compliance going forward. Through the use of social media tools, your compliance function can not only tell the story of compliance, but also communicate expectations and even train. Once again, it is not sim it is sim once again it is simply more than a one-way tool, as using social media facilitates a two-way communication. Just as employees are more apt to tell you about a concern immediately or as soon as after they have been trained on that issue, they may well communicate directly with you after they've received a social media communication on subjects, such as the managing of third parties. CCOs and compliance practitioners need to develop a dedicated compliance strategy around social media particularly in the context of your overall corporate obje objectives. You can take input from your employee base and create a compliance experience that all of your employees will embrace. So what are today's three key takeaways? Well, number one, never forget that social media is a two-way communication. Number two, company employees are customers of the compliance function. And I've said that several times already during this podcast series. I'm going to, going to continue to say that because we rarely think of our customer base in compliance, but that's our employees. And finally, number three, as with all other compliance issues, assess what works for you in your organization. If you're a millennial-based tech, tech sa savvy or others, you can uh, strike out a little bit further on this. If you're still in uh, the 1990s where email is uh, your primary form of communication, you may need to take that into account. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox. I'd like to thank you again for joining me for this episode of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program, and I hope you will join me for our next episode tomorrow. This podcast series on 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network. If you'd like information on any of the topics from this podcast series, please check out the Compliance Handbook 4th Edition, available at LexisNexis.com slash Fox. This podcast is a part of the C-Suite Radio Network. For more top business podcasts, visit c-suiteradio.com. <laughs>